Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Speak Hi. to me in Bosnia. That's all I hear. <laughs> good, 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 good. A little bit of a light-hearted topic, okay? Okay. I'm going to ask you in both high and low levels, okay? okay. I'm going to do this both for players and managers. Yeah? And you're on trial yourself, bro. Let's start with the players, okay? What's your opinion in terms of what, in this generation, what are players lacking in order to make a professional? In my opinion, the thing that uh, the players are lacking to make it professional, first of all, would be the mindset. There is a difference between I would like to make it and I want to make it. Bro, this is mm. like... 10,000 levels ahead. Oh, it would be nice to make it. No, I want to make it. Mm -hmm. Bro, I want to sign this contract. Oh, it would be nice to sign this contract. That's the difference. Bro, that's that's the biggest difference I see between the players that wants to achieve it and, and the ones that would like to achieve it. I think part of that is because of social media. And everything is like, instant gratification instant 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 dopamine 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 and even nowadays kids kids are spoiled bro like but back in my time bro i used to get ass beatings all sorts bro do you know what i mean nowadays mm. they're like oh hey they're like the parents are like too soft too oh no 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 bro if my kids are chatting mom he's getting a backhand bro do you know what i mean but like nowadays, everything is soft. Everything is like beta male type of like type of stuff. And like, and like the kids don't understand struggle. They don't know how to go struggle. So yeah, for me, I think the one thing they're lacking is patience. Patience for me. I would also say that it's about that they don't understand the goal. Like, they don't know what they are fighting for. Mm -hmm. There are so many players that haven't even been on the football game. Like, mm -hmm. you want to be there and you haven't even been on the crowd to see how it looks, to touch it. Bro, mm -hmm. this is a completely different level. Like, me, when I first went to the stadium, I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. This is actually, like, a spectacle. It's so much things happening here and... Uh, and and this is like cool story uh, about uh, about what uh, what you told me. Udi asked uh, to to this uh, to Zach, your friend Zach, about why he would like to be a football player. And he said, uh, "Oh, I would like to carry the Gucci bag in front of the cameras." And like again, I actually I actually do you, remember it. Oh, it's so weird. Do you and do you really Udi want Udi to make joking. it? Yeah, Udi was joking though. Udi was joking, but like, and then like, I love Zach to bits, bro. Like that answer just pissed me off, to be honest. He was like, yeah, yeah, and Udi was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's she back in that? He goes, yeah, yeah, and with the earbuds and that. He's like, yeah, yeah, and then Udi's looking at us, going, yeah, 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 yeah. And we're like, fuck, oh my god, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying, like people's purpose and like goals, like you said, like it's completely different. It's because people are too busy fixated on the gratification. They're too busy fixated on the pleasure, 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 or the lifestyle, what it brings me, rather than for the love of the game. Because mm. I had someone in the podcast the other day saying, in terms of, not in terms of the revenue, but in terms of actually people watching, it's decreasing and decreasing. Remember the guy that we had from Real Madrid? At the, yeah. the number, number of people. Like, that's because if you look at the streets now, Nobody plays cage football anymore. Nobody plays street football anymore. Everyone's indoors, bro. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Everyone's on the games. Everyone on Fortnite. Everyone's doing their Fortnite dances and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, everyone doing 
TikTok dances, but it's crazy. Um, and I think me and you are the last generation where act before who's it like uh, we're the last generation of like old school football before this it's, it's all messed up bro. and the thing is that uh, i remember i was i was in one club uh, three years ago that was uh, that was one of the best semi-professional teams in poland and we had uh, like just just like a cool down competition we had to juggle the ball forward in the slalom and then go around and then then pass the ball to the next person. Mm. The amount of people younger than me that couldn't even juggle, couldn't even juggle the ball through the slalom in a, <laughs> one of the best semi-professional teams in Poland. Bro, the, this just, just fried my brain. Like how you can be a football player and not be able to juggle the ball. <laughs> This is mm. just basics of basics. Like you, you play mm. football just because your parents took you to the training session and then you continue to do this for the last 10 years and you haven't even took the ball yourself outside to play football. <laughs> Bro. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know about you, Patrick, but when I see kids, they're not even playing, but they, their parents are too busy giving them one-to-one -one sessions three, four times a week. I'm like, you're doing it wrong. Let them play. The one-to-ones is like a supplement. It's like giving a kid protein shakes but not giving them chicken and steak. No, 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 no. Protein shake. Oh, it is pure protein. Do, 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 do. But the body's not going to adapt to the real thing. So it's like kids are not playing. Kids are not understanding the this concept of struggle and patience and what their end goal is. So that's where I think like um that's where the direction is going. And correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, but do you feel like back in the day you could not talk back to the manager? You couldn't, right? Because if you do that, you're getting sat, right? Nowadays, big players have an ego and they're like, oh, we need to make sure he's okay. We can't upset him. Do you know he's the biggest example? I know it's an exaggeration, but Eden has a... Bro, if that guy actually worked hard, his potential is crazy. That's why when we went to Real Madrid, because Real Madrid trained hard, but... Injury, 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 injury. But Chelsea never used to train, but do you know what I mean? He used to just walk around with his laces untied type of thing. Mm. Yeah. But that's when I feel like the times have changed mm. a little bit. And um, now there's an ego, there's a lack of struggle, lack of um, respect, lack of. It's a lot of things going on. And I think part of that is to do with like the amount of distraction in the world the amount of over-information where players don't know what's the correct information, what's wrong type of thing. And because of that, everyone thinks they're a mentor guru. That's why we're getting hate going, check these two base and merge channels. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I heard I mean, Patrick Bitt-David say, I heard Patrick Bitt-David saying that uh, before, if you wanted to achieve something, there was a lack of books. Like it was not, uh, the libraries were closed or it was very mm -hmm. hard access to, to the books, to the information. And mm -hmm. nowadays you have so much more information, but it's just not segregated. So it's like knowledge on everything, but in 10 different ways. So like you need to work hard, but you need to work smart, but you also need to study, but you actually shouldn't study because school is bad for you. It's better to earn your own money online. So it's so many, so many things that is just, just shooting in your brain. That's what I mean. It's, it's just a distraction, basically. And this is why we were saying, like, the only right way to make it is have the right mentor and have someone that has the right blueprints. That is the only way. Yeah. But a lot of people just misguided and they don't know what they're doing, and which is sad, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's part and parcel of distraction. And like pushing back on what you said about the kids uh, training too much individually. So I train individually kids myself and I 
recommend to the parents that please don't don't take them on my sessions just let them play just let them play with the kids and just come to me once a week once every two weeks that's mm. enough so uh it's also about the greediness of the individual coaches to be honest mm. that's what i'm saying all right and not every coach has the best, best intention for your kid some of them are just doing it for straight up business mm. some of them like they're doing like yeah yeah come yeah 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 and just and then the parents they're oblivious to it and the kids oblivious to it because he doesn't know what's the right blueprint both of them don't know um but yeah that's just the way it is now i'm gonna flip it right i'm gonna flip the question what's the attributes that managers are lacking nowadays the attribute that, uh, in my opinion, the managers lacks nowadays is the empathy. So, uh, some time ago, uh, you sent me. I think you sent me some something on LinkedIn about uh, about some uh, coach saying that you shouldn't fo- that as a coach you shouldn't focus on the eleven starting players, but actually on the rest that is uh, is either on the bench or not even in the squad, and that's mm. the proper uh, squad management. Because this man needs to be not only motivated, but they need to get also information how to get better. Mm. And therefore, everyone gets better as a unit. Like, this is a team sport and you need to work in a new unit. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I would say I would say the managers need to have the open mind to giving uh, feedback to the, to the other players. Like... Uh, me and you, we are ambitious, so we will we will just go to the coach and ask why we are not playing. But there are many players that will not say anything and they will just uh, talk shit behind the coach's back. In my opinion, they all lack honesty. They're not honest people. And the top of the top of the guy, they they have the honesty because if you have honesty, you have empathy. In my opinion, so. Like, for example, how can you expect your player to, especially the guy that's always in the bench, to give 100% if you're not a man of your words, if you keep telling him, today I'm going to bring you on at 30 minutes, blah, 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 this and that, I'm going to give you 30 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Or today, I'm going to get you to play the second team to get minutes, blah, 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 blah. And he doesn't follow his words. Um, How can you expect him? to give 100% every training session, especially in a full-time environment, which is really important to keep the competitiveness, the intensity, the quality of the training session. If you're not getting your squad players involved or integrated into the team, do you know what I mean? Mm. And it's, it's bizarre to me that they're like putting a harm on and they'll be like, yeah, 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 good guy, yeah, you're the guy, you're the guy, to the, to the big players, the, the starting 11. And then it's there, and then the bench players, yeah, 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 yeah. and like as if you don't exist, bro. Mm. Man, I've been in like that, I'm thinking, yo, like, am I a ghost or something? I've said, hi, how are you? How's your day been? And you're just like, man, yeah. and then you're speaking somewhere else, like, why did you sign me in the first place then? Do you know what I mean? And like, I, I, that, that's the one thing I've never understood. The kind of like prioritizing, and I'm rightly so prioritizing focusing on the starting 11, of course, yeah. But that doesn't mean you treat the other, let's say, eight players like as if they don't exist. That's not right. Um, or, the, or the one, like, in terms of honesty, the amount of times where I've been at a club and I've I've asked them, oh yeah, can I train with someone else? I'm not enjoying it here. I'm not getting enough minutes, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. They're like, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. And then um, I go to the other team, I do well, they want to sign me, yeah, yeah, we want you to play on Saturday. We're going to put a transfer in for you so you can come play Saturday. Bro, an amount of times the club say no, but I'm like, but you've said I can go. And the amount of time to be like, I'm like, what, what are you doing? And he's like, no, 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 no. We want you to stay. But you said I can go. I'm like, okay. And then come Saturday, when he said, I want you to stay, my guy takes me off the bench. I'm like, so I'm not in the bench now. 
So I'm in an even worse situation. And the club are going, the other club, the other club are going, what, what's going on? You put a transfer in. Oh, have you put a transfer in? He goes, yeah, yeah. I'm not, the manager hasn't said anything. Oh, hasn't he? I spoke to the manager. He said, yeah, they're going to, um, they're going to accept the, um, the transfer, blah, blah. This and that. No money, blah, blah. Cool. I'm like, all right, calm. I called the manager and goes, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you're going to have to speak to the president and the, the secretary of the club. They deal with that. I don't know what's going on. And I'm like, mm. why are you blocking transfers? Like, I don't understand. It's crazy to me. And there's another one. Um, there's a team in non league down south, um, Potter Bar, Potter's Bar, or something like that. Some kid, some. I think he's an African kid or a European kid. He's gone to Turkey, third division or second division, something like that. His agent got him a mad contract. Goes on trial. This is just recent in January. Goes on trial. They're like, yeah, cool. And that like, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. I'm on a non contract. I didn't sign a contract. Non contract, which means you they pay you as you play. So you're not tied in with the club. They're like, yeah, sure. So you speak to the club to go, go yeah, yeah, sure. So they obviously to the international clearance, they have to go through the club. Bro, they delay it, delay it, delay it. Till the transfer window closes. The kid didn't go, bro. And now you're stuck at Potter's Bar doing nothing. Because the club wanted money. Even though he's not on a contract. And the club won't release his papers till the end of the season. Now you're stuck. Doesn't know what to do. Now like imagine you're crushing a 23-year-old lad's dream. He's been released since 18, five years, trying to play, trying to play, trying to play. And you're doing that to him. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what I mean by empathy and honesty. Like, I, I just don't get it. You're not playing him anyway, so... What's what's the problem? Even if you're playing him, just let let him spread his wings. Just let him go. I just don't understand. Uh, as soon as I seen that go viral on Twitter, I was angry because I seen it happen as well to other people. It's it's, it's just bizarre to me. No, but uh, there are also good managers. You know, like I had one manager that said that uh, I can even pump balls for you on a training session but your mm. task is to be prepared so my my task is to be prepared as a coach with equipment with uh, tactics with uh, periodization with uh, man management and your task is just to be prepared on trainings and, and games and he said that I can even pump your balls on the training session just to make sure everyone mm. will perform good so uh, like uh, I think the managers need needs to do some uh, Education on man management, like how no. to how to manage the team, like as funny and as it is, but I I I'm not sure if uh, many managers actually ever read a book about how to manage people. And I think part of that is because they are more fixated on their own journey of progressing as a manager rather than serving his plays it's like it's like you're a business guy right and you have employees if you don't serve your employees how can you expect the employees to give you 100 percent and serve you and your business for your business to go up? it's the same thing but they're focused on like oh yeah you're not doing your job properly to the employees but thinking that he's going to give me 100% when I'm not giving him the correct environment, the correct um, communication, the correct man management and leadership to his own players to kind of propel the team up and climb the team up and make the manager look good in a good light. But they're, because they're too busy focusing on themselves rather than sharing his plays and his club because he's too busy oh, I just want to get up to there I want to manage uh, Chelsea one day da, da, da. they're too busy fixated on that and uh, you wait for A course you wait for B course you wait for pro license course 
and go, look at me, I've got my license. Good for you. Can you manage a team, though? How's your man management? How's your empathy skills? How's your honesty? Are you a man of your words? Do you serve other people other than yourself? Do you know what I mean? Like, coaches have gone so focused on badges and coaching badges rather than actually being a manager first. Yeah, that's true. So I have been on the UFA Seekers and uh, yeah. the amount of people there that couldn't even play football, like they did not even know rules of football and they wanted to be coaches. How crazy is that? Like my guy doesn't know how many players are actually playing in a, on a football pitch and he wants to be a coach. How ridiculous. <laughs> Bro, that's, what I mean. that's, just, that's what I'm saying. Like It's because people don't watch football anymore. People don't understand football anymore. People don't play the game. People are just, I'm like, honestly, it's just, it's gone. That's why the game, the freedom, the joga bonita, the, the flair, all of that's gone. It's all robotic now. He play here, he comes out, he come in, get clear, and then switch. It's all patterns. Da, 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 da. There's no freedom to play. And if you make that through ball when you're not meant to, you're just meant to play to this number six that switches it or bounces the centre back. You're getting screamed at. Even if it's going through the goal, it does not matter. The amount of time that happened to me, crazy. Because you they want you to play separate ways because the movement and the timing and the runs, blah blah blah. Yeah, there's a time and place for it. Yeah, you do that 60, 70 percent of the time. I understand it, I get it, right? But the other the 20, 30 percent give me some freedom to play. Bro, so I have a crazy story. <laughs> it's a training session and uh, I'm in uh, I call it uh, shit team. So like there is a first team that will start on the weekend and then there's the shit team. So the players that will be on the bench or maybe in the, if somebody gets injured, they they can come in. Yeah. And uh, there is a situation, I'm back to the goal, a defender is marking me and uh, the coach is, uh, the, the ball is coming to me. I'm making a bad, bad passing and, uh, and the, the coach is applauding the defenders and saying like, yes, very good. This is how we should do and he said, the only thing you could correct is that if he turns and flicks the ball with one uh, one touch, but he said, mm. but only players in Champions League are, are able to do to do things like that, so you shouldn't worry. Same situation a few minutes later, ball coming to me. I flicked it perfectly over the defensive line and the coach was like, uh, that wasn't in the schema. Uh, uh, start again. <laughs> I think... I'm going to add one bonus there. You've seen Pep Guardiola documentary. You've seen Mourinho's documentary, right? How many times have... Have you not seen it? No. You should watch it, bro. Um, in behind the closed doors, one game, they came in and they were, they were down like one or two nil, something like that. And... Pep Guardiola goes, sit down, sit down. Nobody talk. Sit down. You did the week. I messed up. This is my fault. I messed up. Okay? I changed formation. This is not working. I, hey, shut up. Shut up. Divina, shut up. I'm going to do it, okay? When I change, I am human too. I make mistakes too. Bro, I've never seen a manager do that in my life. I'll be so honest. Never mm -hmm. seen it. But at times I'm like saying to a manager, yo, we're getting overrun in midfield. Everybody knows the game is won in the midfield, bro. Everybody knows that, right? I told the manager, listen, yo, we're getting outplayed in the midfield. There's runners coming to I'm defending two, three players, bro. This is not working. So like, you telling me I don't understand anything. <laughs> Get in the bench. No, get in the bench. I'm like, yo, I'm just telling you, I can't defend three players at one go. I've got a third man run. I've got an inside run. I've got an overlap. I've got the wing in front of me. I'm thinking, what's going on? Bro, that game, we were getting bopped. Bro, I come off, bro. 
it was we we were losing like three 0 I think. I come off both game finished seven 0 though. Two games later, managed to get a sack, bro. <laughs> bro, that's bro, that's what I mean, like ability for the managers to kind of not have an ego and be like, Do you know what, I messed up. Do you know what, bro? And taking feedback from the uh, from the players, from the assistant manager. The amount of times when like the assistant manager is telling them something, oh, yeah, I think to do. Oh, shut up, I'm up. And do, doesn't even listen to the assistant manager, not even his assistant. But what's he there for then? I don't. I just don't understand. I, I, I honestly, it baffles me. Like, well, yeah, the world's going crazy. Well, yeah, rant over. That's it. Uh, yeah. But it is what it is. Um, but yeah, no, like, 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 I, I experienced good managers. You know, I had. I had a few. I had a few good managers, but uh, I also had the bad ones, and I can I can see the the difference between good one and the bad one very quickly. But uh, it all comes down to the inner ambition. Like many of the managers are failed football players, so uh, like again, uh, you cannot become a manager just because you don't know what to do after a football career. Like do something mm. else, do some business or anything else, but don't don't destroy for for other younger players. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook. Play by play podcast. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I'm gonna say my opinion based on my experience. I've had some good managers too, and yeah, uh, the one thing is like that I've noticed is managers that serve other people than themselves tend to be the best managers. But like, I've had a manager calling me on a Sunday money could be spending time with his wife and kids. Like, oh, yo, this is your feedback. This is what I think could have done better. Blah, blah, blah. Come in training 20 minutes early and we're going to go through individual stuff, okay? Bro, top man, right there, bro. I'm not. I've never had that treatment before. I know mm. that's because he believes in me. That's because he he wants to invest. I'm part of the project. He he makes me feel. He made me feel involved. I'm like that's what a lot of managers like lack. To be honest, um, but yeah, those the ones, but like they're the ones where like the the progression, like now where they are compared to back then, the. My guy is uh, is doing. He's been in Champions League qualifiers two years on the bounce ball. Mm. So uh, the it. ma the manager I have now on the trial is is this kind of manager. So like he took me to to the side to train two two days ago, and he's like mm. tap tapping me like this and saying, Patrick, you need to learn how to play back to the goal. I see that you are trying. That's fantastic, and I will always appreciate if you try. Don't care about uh, if other players are complaining that you lose the ball. I see you trying. Fantastic. Just continue. Just head up and continue and continue playing, trying to play back to the goal because this is something you need to develop more. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, bro. And uh, this, uh, the background of this coach is that uh, his son plays in the Serie C and he used to play in mm -hmm. Serie A as well for Salan Salarnitana. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, again, he's he's successful. He coached his kid to play professionally in Syria, mm. so he's just chilling now. I'm a firm believer, like how you do one thing is how you do everything. So how they treat all the people outside of football is how they treat people inside football. The amount of times I've seen them like after a game, and it's a home game, and there's the kitchen ladies cooking something. And she's like, hi, oh, you all right, Mike? Are you okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sat there thinking, yo, she's giving you food, man. Like, get off your phone. But I want to smack his phone. Oh, bro, the amount of times I've come across rude managers is crazy. It, bro, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my guy said this, bro. That's crazy, bro. Oh, but I can't explain it. It's just like 
And I'm like, what are you speaking that to a kitchen lady that's cooking and f- the cooking food for the players and the opposition players? If she, oh, he's gonna treat me even worse then. Do you know what I mean? You know why? Because right. uh, he lo- he loves the power. Like every man is living to to get as much power as possible. Like that's what defines a man. The more power you have, the the better respect you have. So uh, if you look in the world, uh, the war, all the war, all the financial crisis, this is all because people want to have power. It's messed up, like, but in my opinion, that's not going to get you longevity of power. There's two things, power of your own ego and power of the people. Power of your own ego is short term and power of the people is long term. Mm. without people you won't last trust me it was only a matter of time before the manager gets blacklisted and I'm and I, I'm hand and heart like that the amount of players that come to me and be like hey yo you signing for them I'm like yeah I'm thinking don't 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 like, why and yeah, he's got a bad reputation really and just like players get blacklisted managers can get blacklisted as well and history speaks for itself. Have they been getting sacked every six months, or have they, uh, have they had arguments, or what's the players' life? Are they staying more than a year, or they're leaving every six months and it keeps changing players all the time? They're the question you've got to ask yourself as a player when you're just like when the manager's doing a background check on a player. You've got to do your due diligence and do a background check on the manager as well. This is why I said like on the past That's podcast. But it's true though. Like more time you said this last time. Um they're like, Oh yeah, what's your ambition? And then they'll be like, Do you have any questions? They'll be like, Yeah, I've got a quick question actually. It'll be, like, oh. be like, Okay, what's your ambitions? Where do you wanna go? What plays have you progressed and developed? And what's your style of play? You've got to vet out the manager because he's gonna be you're gonna see this guy's face for a full season at least. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm. So you need to make sure it's a comfortable ride. I heard like a tip that if you go to the job interview with a notebook, you have bigger chances of getting hired. So like again, like you reverse the psych- psychology. So like you go mm. on a job interview, but you actually interview the, the interviewer. <laughs> I haven't done a notes, but on the amount of times I've asked questions and be like, um, I am, I am, um, very good question. Um, well, <laughs> and then they, they look at the sign there. Do you want to answer? Hmm. I do you want to answer the amount of times. Bro, he's all oh, we, we're running late, you know. I have this appointment with uh, with my uh, doctor now. I need to go, yeah, and catch you next time. <laughs> And bro, it's crazy. And they'd be like, um, um, and see that system managers were, um, yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> bro, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, the amount of times that happens to me is crazy. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.